Black body radiation. In this video, we will remember the historical development of black body radiation. We'll identify the relationship between temperature and black body radiation, and then use this to explain some everyday phenomena that we encounter, as well as converting between temperature and maximum wavelength. Let's first review this slide. Planck's description of quantum theory also helped to correctly model the black body radiation. Black body radiation describes how light is emitted from an object and how that depends on its temperature. An object at room temperature doesn't appear to have any radiation to us because what it is emitting is in the IR region and we can't see it. However, as temperature increases, the color goes into the red region and higher up into a brilliant white blue that we can see. It was known that the wavelength or energy of the radiation was dependent on its temperature, but all attempts to model this had fallen apart at either higher or low ends of the spectrum. Planck's realization that molecules only emit at a specified wavelength helped to explain this phenomena. Let's talk a bit more about black body radiation and put some numbers to it. We'll be doing this in class a bit as well. This graph shows the distribution of wavelength versus intensity. So you can think of it as a count. The higher the intensity of the wavelength, the more photons are at that peak. Each curve represents a different temperature. Notice that at low temperatures, say 3000 or less, much less than 3000, we're mostly in the infrared region. Most of this wavelength are past the visible region. Just a tiny bit is in the red and orange. Because we can't see infrared radiation, when we look at something that's a lower temperature, such as 3000 Kelvin, which you may recognize is still quite hot um, compared to everyday life, we'll see this as red or orange. As the temperature increases to four or 5000 K, now there are lots of photons that are also in the higher energy colors, and the reds and the greens and the yellows. And as we move up into the 6000, we can see that it's the point of maximum intensity is actually right in the middle of our visible region. This means that something at 6,000 Kelvin would glow a bright white color since all of the visible wavelengths are present in large quantities. Now the exact color that we would see would depend on the temperature and where in the region this maximum point actually falls, but it would be some form of white. It also turns out that there's an equation that can help us convert between the wavelength of maximum intensity and the temperature. We can use this, or Wien's law, to determine the temperature of an object if we have the maximum wavelength or a way of finding it, or of course working in the opposite direction. Let's think about places that this comes up. We'll talk about two here. We see light bulbs as different colors because the exact temperatures that they are. Our different sorts of stars shine different colors because of their temperatures. For instance, red dwarfs and red giants are a lower temperature and therefore emit red light as opposed to white dwarfs or white giants, which emit at much higher temperatures, making them appear more white to us. We'll spend some time talking about these interesting things in class as well. Let's do an example using Wien's law to calculate the temperature of our neighboring star, Proxima Centauri. This star is our nearest neighbor and is 4.2 light years away. I tell you that the average temperature is 3042 Kelvin, and I ask you to tell me what region of the electromagnetic spectrum astronomers find the radiation in. So let's be sure to identify everything we know, since this is the first step to solving any problem. We know the temperature. We also know a relation between temperature and maximum wavelength, so we have one thing that we know and one thing that we're trying to find. From here, we can solve for what we want, which is wavelength. Now we can fill our temperature in to solve for our wavelength, to get our number. Now if we're watching units carefully, we see that this is in millimeters. This typically happens when we're using Wien's law because of how Wien's law is reported in millimeters. However, it's a little bit of an odd unit to use, and so I'm going to go ahead and change that to meters by dividing by a thousand. You could also change it in to nanometers if you'd like. I'm going to leave it here though. So that we can match this up to our chart and see that it is in the infrared region. 
We have now gone through and had a refresher on black body radiation discovery. We've identified the relationship between temperature and the black body radiation curve, how that relationship changes, and what we see from light bulbs and various types of stars. And we've also used the relationship in numbers to convert between temperature and the point of maximum wavelength.